Hello YouTube, this is Chief Meteorologist Matt Devitt of Wink News. Today is the first day of August. Happy August, everybody. Time now about 11 a.m. And this is my new YouTube channel where we're going to be talking about a lot of things. And that includes from the tropics to severe weather and even overall weather explainers. So one of the best ways that you can show your support is by subscribing to this channel. And again, we're going to be talking about all types of weather over the next several weeks, months, and in the years ahead. So one of the things that we are going to be talking about today is, and this changed as of this morning, Invest 97L. It's essentially an area that we are investigating. And what you can see here on this infrared satellite imagery from a great website called Tropical Tidbits, this is a blow-up of the showers and storms early this morning around Hispaniola. Now, right now, these are just disorganized scattered showers and storms, but in the days ahead, these disorganized storms will try to come together and develop an area of lower pressure, and then that low could strengthen into the Gulf of Mexico. So I first want to start off with some of the stats. And again, this is uh, just going to be an invest. We don't have a cone yet, nothing too classified, but we do have a, a disturbance with winds of about 25 miles an hour, as well as some pretty high pressure. Good rule of thumb, lower the pressure and the stronger the storm. So I'm going to guide you through some of these power points ahead. So as of right now, the odds for development are at 60%, but if trends really continue, I would not be surprised if this gets bumped to a red 70% or higher as we hit later this afternoon and this evening. And you can also see the general area in orange. So what that is, that is where ingredients are favorable for this to develop into a tropical depression, if not a tropical storm. Again, the odds are not at 100%, but... According to trends, I would not be surprised if that gets bumped up either later today, if not into tomorrow. So why do I think that? Well, as it heads to the west-northwest and eventually taking a gradual turn to the north, uh, the water temperatures are warmer than average for this time of the year, and they certainly are conducive right now in the mid to upper 80s. That's plenty of power, and it is plenty of fuel and you can actually see that those water temperatures across the tropical Atlantic and even into the Gulf of Mexico, and I tell you what, we'll even go off script here and I'll move the camera. I want to show you that even into the Gulf of Mexico, they are warmer than average as well. So the next graphic I want to show you is going to be our intensity models. Now, you can get these on Tropical Tidbits, but please note that when you see these models, it hasn't developed yet, and models can historically struggle with both track and intensity for systems that haven't formed yet. So these models do come with a slight asterisk, but they do show an upward trend and some gradual strengthening, but these could change by later today. We want to look for consistency, but they show a couple things. A, that this has a shot of becoming Debbie, the next name Storm, and then also that we can't rule out at this point a hurricane as we go into time, especially when it is in the Gulf of Mexico. So here's one of our higher resolution models. It's called the graph model, and we have that here at Wink. And right now, those dashed lines, that is a surface trough. It's a tropical wave, and right now soaking Hispaniola. Then as we go into time, it works its way across Cuba, and then it does show an area of lower pressure and the odds for that are more likely as it heads into the Gulf of Mexico because of the combination of low to moderate wind shear, that would be favorable for strengthening, as well as the warm water temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, and at least a good amount of tropical moisture. The levels do lower a touch, uh, you know, potentially sucking in some dry air as we hit about the early to middle part of next week, but the ingredients are certainly there for some gradual strengthening. But here's the deal for Florida. You know, if models don't change, we would be on the eastern side of this low, especially in southwest Florida. So if it's just an open tropical wave or, you know, the most aggressive solution, a hurricane, you know, southwest Florida would be on the wetter side, oftentimes referred to as the dirty side, 
and you know I'm expecting inches of rain, and then obviously where it makes landfall would see the maximum impact. And again, this could very easily change, but you can see that because of that solution, that inches of rain is being represented with both the European model and the American model, at least for my local forecast area here in Southwest Florida. But these could certainly change depending on the ultimate track. There also have been some interesting uh, noodles and spaghetti model plots. And here's the reason why. It has to do with the tropical steering. And oftentimes we can dictate where tropical systems go with the steering at 20,000 feet or what's referred to as 500 millibars, the height level. So this big blue H and the area in blue, think of that as a big atmospheric shield. And that's why it's going to be heading generally to the west and northwest over the next couple of days. But then look what happens by the weekend. There's an area of weakness caused by that area in red. You see that on the top-hand portion of your screen. That is a trough that digs in across the Great Lakes. And I'll point that out right here. Now, as that digs in, look at how we see a weakness in the high. And, you know, these tropical systems don't want to be bothered. They like to go towards the path of least resistance. And that path of least resistance almost picks up the system and wants to turn it more to the north. But watch what happens after that occurs. The high pressure system across the plains starts to build back in east. Then the system doesn't know where to go. It's kind of meandering about. And if you do see these models as we go into time doing loop-de-loops or going west, north, or east, it all has to do with that potential high, high pressure system building in from the east and not giving the system a clear path. Now, that could, if it comes to fruition, uh, be a bit of a troublemaker because if it's just slowing down or potentially even stalling, very heavy rainfall and flooding would be a concern, at least for some part of the southeast, if not the state of Florida. Now, we don't know yet where that could set up, and even if it does set up, but it's at least a possibility at this point that I did want to point out and that some of the models have been indicating. Okay, so now I want to switch gears and show you tropical tidbits once again, as well as um, what the models have been showing. So again, this is going back to the satellite loop. And another great website I always recommend, it's called uh, weathernerds.org. You get a lot of great websites here, and uh, this is a good one. And what we're looking at here is, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit more, is going to be what we call the ensemble members. Now, you never just want to look at one model and one run, because models can change. And oftentimes what I see a lot of, you get what I, I call them uh, weather weenies, you'll get these uh, amateur websites where they just show you one model run, they show you the worst case scenario, and that's like reading a book, but only reading one chapter. We, we want to read all the chapters. We want to read the entire story and the entire book. And to do that, we want to look at what's called the ensemble members. And that's what you see here. These are basically possibilities of what each individual model is showing. Okay, so first we'll start off with the European model. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So these individual lines are the possibilities of the euro. Then the black line is the average of those possibilities. Now, you'll notice also that the colors are not very bright. These are indicating uh, intensities, okay? And here's actually, I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit, kind of a legend. I wonder if I can. Okay, maybe not, but that's Okay. The intensities here are showing light blue, dark blue, and even some green. And those are showing it as, at least with the European model, a weak low, tropical depression, if not a tropical storm. They're not showing a very powerful system when it's in the Gulf of Mexico. But again, that's only one model. So let's backtrack a bit, and we're going to take a look at the American model. And the American model 
does show in its deterministic runs the potential for a hurricane, and you also see that the black line, the ensemble, does show that loop-de-loop. And that's because the system, for a time, isn't shown the way, isn't guided because of uh, kind of a atmospheric backup because of the high-pressure system building in from the west. So that would be a scenario we wouldn't want to see for central and northern Florida because that could lead to very heavy rain and flooding for a portion of the state. And also, in addition to southwest Florida, some significant rainfall totals as well. So let's entertain that America model solution. So you'll see it coming into play here. And first off, look at how this is going to show you pressure levels as well. There's not much in the way of an area of lower pressure forming as we hit Saturday evening. Now, as we go into time, you'll see that the pressures are lowering. And basically what this model is indicating is that the lower shear, the tropical moisture levels, and the warm water temperatures would allow for some strengthening as it heads north in the Gulf of Mexico. But how long does it spend over the water? You know, does it stall out over the water? Still, there are more questions and answers at this point. So take this one run with a grain of salt because we don't know those answers yet. And then there's a look at the loop-de-loops going every which way, and it looks like it's had uh, one too many drinks at this point. So the other model I would like to indicate is a model out of Germany. It's called the Icon model. And same deal, you'll notice that it evolves from a nothing to a weak area of lower pressure, and then you can see that the numbers are lowering, sign of strengthening, intensification to a certain degree. This ICON model has it as a uh, tropical storm. They're not showing hurricane, but still early, and we have to see how things evolve. And what I want to do now is, I'm going to reduce my video, I want to show you another website from uh, another, uh, just we have so many great weather websites and uses, um, but this is showing you some of the dynamics as we go into time. I wouldn't look so much at the uh, the track here, but more so look at the ingredients, and you'll notice that once we hit the Gulf of Mexico time frame, and I'm kind of showing you that right here. The wind shear levels would be about 10 to 20 knots. That's about low to moderate shear. And then it does suck in a touch of drier air. This is the 700 to 500 millibar relative humidity. It's about moisture levels at 10 to 20,000 feet up. And it does show a touch of it lowering, sucking in some drier air from the west, but still would be reasonably conducive. So you take all these ingredients together, and that is why, in a nutshell... Debbie is possible by this weekend into early next week for the Gulf of Mexico, but it's still kind of early though, and we can't pinpoint precisely where the system is going to be going and to what caliber. So that's the tropical update as of Thursday morning, August 1st. If you haven't done so already, here's going to be my YouTube channel. I would love your support. That would be fantastic. And I will continue to do these uh, tropical updates both on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube as well. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And until next time, have a great Thursday ahead.